what I'm arguing now is that the media is closer to the body. You don't have to drive down to a strip mall or down the streets to be exposed to uh, the effect of the microization society. You live with it. You wake up with it. Who wake up and check your messages as soon you wake up? What information do you check? How often are you checking your emails, checking your calendar, grabbing information? I'm arguing that those iPhones and iPads have pushed the magnetization further. And that calculative rationality is not just outside of the home. We carry it with us all the time, and we'll leave it. And especially in religion. Here's some example here. You can see top left. This is an app. If you want to go on and check some apps, you're more than welcome. But you can take a picture of the palm of your hand <coughs> and get a reading. On the right one, you take a picture of yourself, and you can have a reading of your aura. Many years ago, I did some research on New Age spiritualities. And I remember visiting some festivals and waiting in the queue. Uh, but now you just download the app. You do it for free. You expose to some publicity, of course. And you get a, a quick reading of, of this. You do it yourself. You, don't need, you can bypass a professional. At the bottom, a confession booth. You can go and answer some questions, and then the, 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 the app will give you a judgment. Top left. An Islamic compass helps you to know where to pray, at what time. Helps you with Ramadan. Uh, gives you some quotes from the Quran as well. Here the bottom left, the Bible scholar, as I mentioned to you when I started speaking. Uh, top right, to help with voodoo rituals. And on the right, with witchcraft. It's a book of spells. It helps you to keep track of what you're doing. At the bottom here, Pentecostal tunes helps you to um, follow some Pentecostal music and as well some events as well. You get information as to what's happening and when. And in the middle, uh, it's if, if you're interested in the exorcism, uh, you use this app, you enter a room, you decide on the length of time, it gives a, a, an incantation. So what I'm saying is that there are more and more apps available that are used by people. And you can guess that uh, the younger you are, the more inclined you will tend to use those apps. And Last time I checked, there were numerous apps, and I'm sure that now there are even more. Now, what I'd like to do is try to link the use of those apps with what I spoke to you about, the magnetization of society, but what I've updated in, say, speaking about the isolation of society. So using those new devices to increase uh, your use of calculative rationality and be more efficient in not only your work life, but private life. Here's a quote, it's not uh, in the field of religion, but it's a research that's been done among young mothers. And they use an app to help raising uh, and looking after their babies. And here I quote from an informant. It was usually helpful because when you have a newborn, you have to keep track of all the diaper changes, feedings, and sleep for the initial development. And I keep a record of all her vaccinations and doctors visiting there. Moms and dads are really into numbers, like what percentile of weight and height the kids are. You can chart it like a visual graph. I like that, yes. I want to see where she's compared to everyone else, end of quote. So here's this notion of benchmarking yourself with other mothers around the world. You put your information online. There's a movement called the Quantify Self, which you can practice sports. And you track down your performance, and you compare yourself with other people. Uh, it's apps about health as well, how to improve their health, how to stop smoking, how to lose weight. And you compare yourself with other people. Here's another quote. I use the iPad every week because I can come straight from work and have my 10 minutes before class to look at pictures of the missionary, the place we're studying. And I can save them all and scroll through while we're having a story. And I can play music that goes along with the place. So you can see here, when it comes to religion, this app helps that person to be more efficient. And this notion of predictability as well knows that uh, that person will get information on the app and will be able to check. And here, I make reference to the quantified self-movement. 
There's a movement that deals with meditations. And I quote from the internet, Insight Timer, formerly Zen Timer, logs your meditations and provides statistics and journal capability. It allows you to export your data and also has social features. It's available for Android, iPhone, and iPad, and graph statistics sync across devices, end of quote. You can measure your activities in terms of meditation, your sleep patterns, your, uh, and how you perform compared to other people. This idea of capability, you carry it with you all the time. People have Fitbits or other devices as well. This is the idea that the magnetization process has been pushed further. It's no longer outside of your house, you carry it with it all the time. And this is affecting the way people practice their religion more and more. And it's part of, it's part of, this, neo, of, the, of, of uh, this neoliberal ideology. And I've only got three minutes, and my apologies, I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna run through these slides uh, discussing about uh, the heavy theories of yoga and Habermas. My apologies about that. But for the uh, yoga and Habermas makes a difference between communicative action, which is a dialogue, uh, performed by groups in civil society and its focus on the quality of life. And it's this idea for Habermas that in civil society, what he called the life world, people will be able to speak about things that matter to people as a community and be able to express issues. And he opposed it to instrumental reason, the reason used by large corporations, by the government what I make reference to about the calculative rationality, the magnetization of society, or the ization of society. And he worries about what he called the colonization of the life world. And here, I make reference to this by the replacement of the mechanism of social coordination by mechanism of political and financial accumulation. This is increasing, I argue. Through, and those new technologies are helping people uh, to use uh, instrumental reason, not only for the professional life, but for the everyday life as well, and for religion as well. And in the theories of Habermas, I've only got two minutes, um, <laughs> theories of Habermas, when Habermas had to write about religion in the 80s, he thought that religion was um, an agent of instrumental reason, helping governments and corporations to push for the colonization of the life world. Recently, he changed his mind and realized that religions can be part of the communicative action and be present in the public sphere to speak about matters that are important to us from a qualitative point of view. And he speaks about religion being a, 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 a useful resource to help preventing this colonization of the life world. And he came with this theory of post-secularism that is our society today, in which we have religious groups speaking to each other in the public sphere, the religious groups speaking to atheist groups as well, and the challenge for Habermas is to have those groups speaking among themselves, but with atheist groups as well. And of course, he speaks about communicative action. And I'm arguing very quickly that his theory of post-secularism, his project, it's working. We, or apart from certain issues which I don't have the time to go through, religious groups are speaking to each other in the public sphere and speaking to atheist groups as well. But at the same time, the way they speak is through instrumental reason. It's become calculative. And that's why I speak about a near, neoliberal post-secular project, arguing that post-secularism is working, but not the way Habermas would like to walk. It's working. Uh, in a sense that groups are speaking to each other, but it doesn't slow down what Habermas will call the colonization of the life world. It's still dealing with strong notion of instrumental reason. And the isolation of society or the use of those apps are helping uh, this increase and are for, of course are affecting all generations. But think about the youth that's being born with those technologies. Thank you.